The banjo may be one of the oldest instruments still around today. Early gourd banjos can be found from as far back as ancient Mesopotamia. From there, the instrument spread to Egypt in the 15th century BCE and soon after to sub-Saharan West Africa. There, the gourd banjo would change and become a vital part of many musical cultures. The banjo would cross the Atlantic Ocean nearly 3,000 years later on slave ships. In West Africa, the gourd banjo, or gourd lute, that traveled from Egypt would change into the akkadentin. This instrument, found in Gambia, consists of three strings, a gourd, and a stick for the neck. Unlike modern banjos, it does not use tuning pegs. Instead, the strings have loops on the end that are tightened or loosened. The instrument has a similar look and playing style to today's banjos. Gambia. However, it is impossible to tell just which West African gourd lute would become the modern banjo. Forced from their homes, families, lives, and possessions, enslaved Africans were able to preserve some of their culture through music and instruments. Early Americanized versions of the gourd lute have been found in Haiti dating back to the early 1600s. Similar instruments have been found in the American South. The instrument, associated with enslaved blacks, would soon gain a larger role in American culture through minstrel shows. Children living on plantations would be taught how to play the banjo by slaves. These children would then grow up and use the banjo to perpetuate stereotypes and propaganda about black Americans on stage. In the minstrel era, there were rarely any black performers of the banjo. Instead, white performers in blackface would do routines mocking black people. Due to the nationwide popularity of these shows, the banjo too grew in popularity. With the banjo becoming a mainstay in American culture in the 19th century, it became more widely available to purchase. Luthier Joel Sweeney and drum maker William Butcher are credited as the first wide makers of banjos. With ease of access to the banjo, the playing style soon moved further away from traditional African roots and towards the modern bluegrass sound. These picking styles were taught in manuals and magazines, such as The Complete Preceptor by Elias Howe and Buckley's Monthly Banjoist, published by J.K. Buckley. With the introduction of the Briggs Method in the late 19th century, the banjo sound started to change. Moving away from the traditional frailing and bastardized minstrel styles, the stroke style gained prevalence. This style is similar to the modern Scruggs, or bluegrass style of banjo playing. In these styles, banjoists would fingerpick individual notes on the banjo. Due to the change in playing style, more music styles were available to be played on the banjo. These include polka, waltz, and the new and exciting ragtime. As the new century came and went, Americans became tired of the rag and vaudeville sounds. It was time for jazz. And with jazz, a new banjo emerged. The tenor and plectrum banjo became widely used, fitting nicely into the sound of a brass orchestra, sounding out loud and bright with the resonator attached to the back of them. The jazz age came and it went, and the banjo found yet another new home with new music styles, new American folk, and bluegrass. Artists like Earl Scruggs and Pete Seeger brought the banjo out of the orchestra and onto the radio waves. Seeger would revitalize and re-envision what folk was, and Scruggs would do the same, but for the banjo as a whole. Scruggs played, and he played fast. His style of playing the banjo, using three metal fingerpicks to pluck out individual strings and notes drenched in fills and rolls, single-handedly redefined the sound of the banjo. When someone thinks of the banjo today, they instantaneously think of his song, Foggy Mountain Breakdown. While the banjo has largely fallen from its place in every American parlor, it still lives on in modern folk, bluegrass, and country music. Whether or not the banjo makes a wide return to pop culture, it will remain the oldest American instrument one brought here in an all-too-American way.